Hello viewers, I want to introduce you to the Raytheon PodBot team, sponsored by Jim Bockerich. My name is Nicholas Miller, and the rest of our team members are Joey Manis, Buddy Bachelor, Robert Dyer, and Brian Sanderson. My discipline, as well as Joey's and Brian's, is mechanical engineering. Robert and Buddy's discipline is systems engineering. Our team has been working all year on our senior design project, and we are excited to share it with you. Starting off, here's an overview of our design day poster. Our team was tasked with creating a system that assists first responders with various tasks. The assistance comes in the form of a custom-made 3D printed robot that can go from a mission task to a functional air or ground robot in 24 hours. This project specifically aids Border Patrol, SWAT, and Search and Rescue by providing them with a cheap, customizable drone option compared to the costly pre-ordered options. These drones can be used to aid with natural disasters, hostage situations, and cutting down on Border Patrol ground surveillance. Our deliverables include a GUI to guide the operator in selecting parts for their mission, an AirBot, and a GroundBot variant. Both of these robots are assembled using mainly 3D printed parts that are presented to the user by the GUI. The rest of the parts, such as electronics and motors, are found in the supply cabinet provided nearby. The PodBot graphical user interface was programmed and run through Python. The operator will boot up our system in the Python command prompt, and the GUI will pop up. The GUI is a list of selections to curate the bot for their specific mission. In this sequence, we will display the ground bot mission. You will see that we select an option for each of the ground bot parameters and then go to our designated location to access the GUI generated bill of materials. The sample ground bot our team and sponsor decided on was for the SWAT 1 mission. This mission requires carrying a small payload or ammunition to a hunkered down squadron in a firefight. For our design, we went with a half track to maximize load distribution and traction. Additionally, the design allows for the tracks to be swapped out for wheels in case the mission requires higher transportation speeds. The agreed upon airbot we made was for the SWAT 3 sample mission. This mission requires us to have an eye in the sky to survey an area and find a person of interest. Or, be able to land within a five foot radius of a desired location in order to stream live footage for a maximum of three hours. For our design, we went with the quadcopter to maximize flight time and maneuverability. The first GUI we made was using Bubble IO. Our team does not have an electrical nor computer engineer, meaning our coding experience is extremely limited. Bubble IO was our original solution because it allowed us to use a drag and drop element method for creating a GUI. The second iteration of our GUI was done in Python as seen before. We made the switch over to Python because Bubble.io had limited capabilities for making a GUI and making the GUI we needed would require as much time and effort as it would take enough to learn Python. We needed to create the GUI ourselves. We stuck to the idea of simplicity and effectiveness over flash and complexity. The first stage of iteration for the AirBot was a much larger model with massive propellers. The large size focused us to use heavy motors and massive batteries to achieve the required flight range for the mission. While this airbot was functional and achieved sustainable controllable flight, we believe that we could make it smaller and more covert. The second iteration of the airbot is smaller while retaining the same flight distance abilities. New part availability allowed us to maintain the same flight performance as in the original, while adding live video transmission capabilities for the required three hours. The first iteration of the ground bot was a fully tracked vehicle to focus solely on weight distribution. Our final iteration of the ground bot is either a half track or wheeled vehicle to focus on weight distribution, control, and adaptability. We were delayed in the creation of the ground bot because we were under the assumption that a track vehicle would be easier to make than a quadcopter. When we spent all of our resources focusing on the quadcopter, that left us with only a single version of the ground bot. Despite these major setbacks, our team persevered and created the final iteration, which uses all the original components combined with the lessons we learned from the previous iterations. During the development of these two bots, we had our share of setbacks and failures that turned into bountiful resources upon which we improved. During the development process, we quickly realized that the choice of materials for 3D printing played a crucial role in the performance and durability of our bots. 
After testing with various materials, we found that a combination of both PLA for lightweight materials and ABS for more robust components provided an optimal balance of weight and strength. Our team designed the bots with modularity in mind, allowing for easy replacement of damaged components. This approach not only reduced maintenance time, but also enabled us to iterate and improve the designs more quickly. To maximize the operating time of our aerial and ground bots, we focused on optimizing energy consumption by carefully selecting motors and batteries, and in this way we're able to significantly improve energy efficiency. Throughout the design process, we utilized simulation software to predict and analyze the bot's performance. This approach helped us to identify potential issues early on and make and make informed decisions during the design process to best meet our requirements. Additionally, rigorous real-world testing allowed us to refine our designs and ensure the bots performed as inspected as expected in various conditions. The successes of our project in development far outweigh the failures. From each failure, we were able to, as a team, come back stronger in our design and approach. A major success that we had was the ability to utilize personal 3D printers to our benefit and therefore minimize the cost associated with purchasing a new 3D printer. We were also able to see successes in the designs of both the aerial and ground bots. After multiple iterations of each, the final designs proved to be major successes for our mission parameters in the sky and on the ground. In conclusion, our journey in developing 3D printed aerial and ground bots taught us the importance of material selection, modularity, energy optimization, and the value of simulation and testing. These lessons have been invaluable in refining our designs and will undoubtedly guide us in our future projects. Given more time and budgetary resources, we would aim to develop stronger bots printed with carbon fiber and upgraded flight and drive components. A longer time frame would allow for us to do extended research and development, eventually aiming at the goal of providing both bots to snap together with minimal external necessities for operation. To sum up our project, our team has thrived from designing, testing, failing, and repeating. Our use of rapid prototyping allowed us to succeed despite all obstacles we encountered. The PodBot team would like to thank you for joining us on our journey and hope to see you at Design Day.